Uh, let's call to order our Thursday, January 12, 2023, Airport Advisory Board meeting. Happy, uh, happy New Year to all. Kayla, do you mind starting with the roll, please? Uh, Chairperson Harrison Earl. Here. Board Member Malcolm Dean. Here. Board Member Russell Robeson. We barely have a quorum, thank you. So first meeting of the year, we kick off with um, our annual business meeting. First, Steve, wanna welcome you to the board. Thank you. Uh, really excited to have you with us. Um, would you like to introduce yourself? <clears throat> Me, there you go. Hello, I'm Steve Shook. I've been at Longmont for about four years and uh, hangar owner and pilot and um, it's uh, gonna be a pleasure to, to help uh, the board. Thanks. Thank you. We, uh, we're glad you're with us. Thank you. Uh, first item of business is election of officers. We do this at the start of every year. Um, we've got chair and vice chair as the officers. Any nominations for chair? I don't really care to self-nominate here, so if anyone else wants I will, to. I will nominate Mr. Dean. for chair. Thank you. Second. Moved and seconded. Any other motions? Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? You're stuck with me. Vice chair, any nominations? Mr. Well, Dean. Uh, nominate Rob Russell. I will absolutely second that. So we have motion and seconded for Mr. Robeson as vice chair. Anyone else? All, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <coughs> you, you can vote for yourself too. You, you didn't do either one. <laughs> you abstain, all right. Um, officers elected, thank you all. You're welcome to move if you want to, but your call. Approve minute notice posting location. City staff, I believe, please correct me, the official posting location that has been in place for the last year is the website. Yes. Which would be the recommendation to go forward, is that correct? That is your primary location, is the website, PrimeGov, and then their secondary is the bulletin board that's just outside the city manager's office at 350 Kimbark, just up these stairs. Okay. And we need a formal approval of that, evidently. Um, would anyone like to make a motion for that? Otherwise, I'll do all the mics on here. So I'll motion that we have the official meeting posting location as PrimeGov, the city's website, secondary location as the bulletin board at 350 Kimbark with a request to airport management to post at the airport, although the official location is still the website. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Approved. And that is, believe it, we've, we did that in past years too. It is a request. The official location is the website, but it, we just like having it there for the, for oh, yeah. making sure it's easy for everyone. We can certainly do that. And what I've been doing this last, well, since I've been here is to increase that, I've been building that email list yep. and I email it to everyone also. That's, that's exactly what we're going for, but we also recognize the official legal location is the website. Okay, uh, public invited to be heard. I've got nobody who's on the sign up sheet, so. Whoever wants to come on down first. <coughs> Since it's the first meeting of the year, I'll do the quick reminder, five minutes. Uh, please direct comments to the board. Start with your name and address. Um, it's on. There you go. Uh, Ron Krenzel, 12191 <coughs> North 61st Street, Longmont. I wanted to talk about a couple things. I went to the city council meeting where the lease was approved and I was horrified. I was so angry. Um, you know, <clears throat> the process of that lease improvement was the, it was the FAA was blamed for the time of the lease. The, the advisory board, board was a pray, uh, blamed for approving it. The FAA was approved uh, that 
regional airports, the airports around were uh, blamed for the conditions of the lease after you had had so many discussions about what really should be done and the, the ramifications of what they, what they did. And then I listened to the conversation between the city council and the people and the administration, and <clears throat> they kept reiterating, it, it, it came out to, well, it's just a starting point. The lease really doesn't mean much. And I, I'm going, this is not a good deal. You know, you really need to watch as the advisory board what you agree to. And I, t I understand why you approved it, because I came here about three times, and every time they came back with a different story. It's done, it's over, and I, I, that's my angst. Uh, the other thing I'd like to respond to is, <clears throat> I mentioned that electric airplanes were probably not very functional and there wasn't any available. Uh, <clears throat> and City Councilman Martin uh, questioned that. I went and did a little research. There's only one certified electric airplane in the world, and that's by Pipistrel. It's a Vizzle. Uh, and it's probably as useless of an airplane as you would ever want to he see. It has about the same characteristics as a Cessna 150. Um, it has a 50-minute range, which at cruise is about 100 miles. That's fair, within one or two. But if you took off from an, if you took off from the Longmont Airport, you could not get the Greeley and back. Uh, you can't get a pilot's license in this airplane. About forty percent, you can't do a cross country. At at ninety degrees, the density altitude of the Longmont Airport is about eighty four hundred feet. The, this airplane has a service ceiling of twelve thousand. The president of Pipistrol said this is only for the aerodrome. Now, we don't really use the aerodrome conference, uh, the designation in the United States, but in Europe, they're tiny little airports and they fly around in circles, so it's somewhat pertinent. Um, the useful load is also 378 pounds. That means I don't know any two guys that could fly in it. Um, A Cessna 152 has a, a 150 has a better use of load, and it'll fly for three and a half hours. The problem with this airplane is you can't get a pilot's license in it if it ever becomes certified. So I think if you, when you guys hear about this electrification of the airport, you ought to take that into consideration because there are no usable aircraft on the visible radar that you will see certified forever, or for a long ways unless they decide it's a COVID and then they'll run it right through. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak right now? Dave Kopp, uh, 4625 West 99th Place, Westminster. And uh, I wanted to start by thanking Levi for not sending out the uh, agenda in the minutes again. Um, so we had to go dig them up ourselves. Um, I don't think that's by accident. The, uh, I want to read, I, I too, like Ron, was very disappointed in the, uh, the way the council was handled on the master lease. The, uh, and I know that you had a lot of concerns. A few of them were passed along, very few of them. And, uh, you know, you, you talked about all the problems that we pointed out to you, and then you just ignored them and, and approved it here. I want to read the first uh, paragraph out of one of the FAA documents on leases. The FAA does not, require, not, does not review all leases, and there is no requirement for a sponsor, meaning the city, in this case of Longmont, to obtain FAA approval before entering into a lease. So beyond, what follows that is a moot point. The bottom line is they don't need to review leases and they don't typically do it. And so there is no grant assurance violation by offering a 30 and 30 lease. There's no grant assurance violation by 30 and 20. The city could do what they want. And they have done what they wanted. 
But unfortunately, the result of that is going to be they're not going to attract any developers. And I'm one of them. And uh, it's just not going to happen, not without modifying that lease. Now, they've left it open. They can do what they want after the 30. But typically, they're obviously you pointed out what their intent is. They plan to take the hangers, or at least take them and sell them and rent them at three times what the uh, ground lease is. So that's the agenda. And uh, once uh, Levi is promoted and gone somewhere else, somebody else will replace him. Um, and the bottom line is probably most of this review board won't be around either. But that mess is still here, and that mess is going to going to severely strangle the airport growth because of it for that, certainly in the next five to ten years. And uh, I know you think that's, I'm just spitting in the wind here, but the bottom line is I've been here 20 years. I've donated far more time to the airport and the airport community than everybody on this board. I've been officers of a number of hangar owners association. I've also even been out there for hundreds of hours trying to, trying to smoke out the prairie dogs, all trying to help out the airport manager. So the bottom line is I know it's a, it's a thankless job. There's a lot of people out there that are not happy with your performance. I'm not happy with your performance. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak at the first public invited to be heard? Okay. Seeing no one, next agenda item is our approval of December 2022 minutes. Board members, anyone have any revisions to the minutes? If there's no revisions, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Second, thank you. <laughs> Moved and seconded, any discussion? Uh, all in favor of approving December 2022 minutes, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries. Updates from the airport manager. Mr. Brown. All right. Uh, not too much stuff on my plate this week. Just some quick updates mostly for you guys here. Um, Southwest Sewer Project is item A here. Um, good news on that project pretty much completed. Um, I just did a change order earlier today to extend the, it by one day. So by tomorrow, it should be <laughs> pretty much completed. They're doing some cleanup. They were repacking where they dug through the uh, perimeter road today. Um, and making it passable again. Apart from that, the project's pretty much completed. We got now sewer way out beyond where the uh, the wind tee is on the airport. Uh, so it's all there for future access. It is pretty much done. And that's uh, issue A. Are there any questions on issue A? Okay. All right, B, prairie dog mitigation. Now, moving along pretty good um, with mitigation. Um, just as a, a quick recap, prairie dog, uh, kind of exploded again on the airport this year it's talking with local wildlife guys i guess they kind of saw that all over the city um, they essentially estimate that our population doubled um, of course something we got to take care of not only for fa reasons but just because it's you know as an airport we need to get them out of there for safety reasons also um, had a meeting earlier today with the city wildlife department um, we've been tracking down various different avenues of trying to get them out of here um, it looks like we're most likely going to go with a uh, proposal from, I think it's uh, DHQ Ranch Services, and they're going to come out, and we're actually going to, hopefully, this is all still in the works, um, have their three machines at the airport at the same time go through and just do a massive push on the airport. Uh, to do this mitigation. It's going to cost a little, the airport a little bit of money, um, but we think we really want to get kind of a heads up on it and kind of tackle this as heavy as we can. The idea being have uh, them come out and do one big push, wait a couple weeks, come back, do another big push, and then the idea is after that, hopefully the city's wildlife people will be able to stay on top of the numbers that we'll have out at the airport. Um, so that's kind of the, the update plan, where the direction that we're headed right now. No agreements or contracts have been signed at the moment, but this is kind of the, the point of the funnel where everything's kind of come to, and it looks like what our action plan is going to be for getting this taken care of. Uh, Mr. Dean. Yeah, Levi, do you have any inf uh, information on roughly what the cost will be to, for, for the mitigation? mitigation? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still... Yeah. We're still kind of trying to figure out the exact numbers on that. Preliminary estimates put the total somewhere around $30,000. Um, but kind of the way he's, we've been negotiating it, and he's been, it's 
based on hourly, so that's kind of his best guess. I had I drove him all over the airport. I showed him where all the holes were. We did estimates. He kind of calculated out what he thought his team and stuff like that would need. He he based it on hourly, uh, and but then he gave us a total. Yeah, so I could not going through all the numbers, but for the first round, he's okay. So it was twenty eight thousand dollars. And then for the second round, that's right, for a second round, he quoted $14,000. So closer to 40 plus thousand dollars there for a total. So it's, it's going to be a little bit of a spendy process. These numbers, um, we did, I did double, triple check with uh, all the wildlife folks in the city too, and they all kind of nodded their head and said that looks pretty fair to them as far as what the services cost. Um, we did also actively reach out to several different people. We talked with this company, uh, Smith Wildlife Control Services and Rocky Mountain Wildlife Control Services. And these by far seem to be the most professional um, kind of outfit, definitely interested in being here at the airport. So that's kind of the direction that we're going. Thank you. Yeah. Can you, uh, Levi, what was the timeline on that? So honestly, my timeline is quickly as possible. So I'm this just this earlier today had a meeting um, with the wildlife department. I put in a phone call to Dan. He hasn't got back to me, but once he gets back to me, start talking about what his window is, and at that point, I go back to the city and make sure that we're good to go and pull the trigger. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. Um, e, engineering consultant updates. Uh, this would be a pretty quick one. Um, Talis has been helping us on this one with, uh, you know, going through the firms and stuff like that. Next week, we've got interviews with the, the three top firms, and we'll all be kind of sitting through their talk. And at that point, we can make a choice and then move forward um, with signing an agreement. So that should hopefully be accomplished fairly quickly here. Anyone have any questions from Levi on any of this? What, uh, what Hold services? on a second, Steve. Go ahead. What services uh, are, is this engineer going to be doing for the airport? So for, for, it, for any airport, um, it's pretty uh, standard to have a, some kind of an engineer um, kind of on an ongoing contract. And to the point where even when I do meetings with the FAA and CDOT, these you know obligatory grant meetings we're talking about future CIP projects, um, they say, okay, well, who, who's your airport engineer? Um, we actually started the, and I'm certainly glad we did the uh, process of getting an engineer on a little bit early because I had a conversation last year with uh, the FAA and I said, well, I want to get these projects started. And they said, well, you got to make sure you got a, your new engineers on for 2023 before we'll even talk to you. So essentially what they're there for is, um, I, let's say I want to do you know, perimeter road uh, upgrade on the airport. So if I get that, if I get potentially money earmarked for it, then me and my engineer are going to go into a meeting with the FAA and the engineer's gonna do all the drawings, they're gonna figure cost estimates, they're gonna figure what needs to be done, yada, yada, yada. We're gonna go to the FAA, we're gonna say, okay, we're gonna use this grant money for this. Um, so it's just kind of um, it's projects like that is pretty much so, what it's for. So is, is he gonna be a consultant or is he actually going to be doing engineering work? So it's it's a firm that we're, we're signing an agreement with, so. Okay. Whoever it is, they'll they'll be you know there there might be a planner point man and then yeah. they have electrical engineers and then they have you know structural engineers okay. Okay. and they kind of draw from their pool of people. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And that was the last item that I had on the update. Mr. Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Sorry, Vice Chair Robeson. Oh yeah, new time. Uh, Levi, mm -hmm. um, since this is the airport manager section, I was just responding or thinking about what the public invited to be heard said about the uh, minutes being included with the agenda and I went to the portal and I can kind of see how they might get to that. Uh, have you been on there? I mean there's a link for agenda and then you got to get the three dots to get the full packet. Is yeah that I did get download I went and downloaded the agenda of course and stuff that from the same online portal. I did not actually check for the minutes so I couldn't speak with any authority on that this week. Phil can you put that up on the TV over there? Yeah. The uh Longmont website. Just for anybody in the audience that um, wanted to see the minutes, they're there, but I agree they're not obvious, maybe. 
And I look back through the previous ones and they're this way too. It says agenda, and if you click on that, you just get one page. But if you click the three dots next to it, it pulls out a little packet dialog box. <laughs> All right, we just had this up. We should have kept the page up. <laughs> yeah. So this is the web page that is the city's website. And I typically go over to city council on agenda minutes and get to the portal. You can also get to this, get to this straight from the advi and airport advisory board. Then you have the agenda that's posted. We usually try to post that the week before the meeting. So full, um, it's usually the Friday, bef Friday before the Thursday. Uh, we try to get that out now. It was a lot less time before, if you'll recall. So this is much, this is an improvement in our minds. And then after the agenda is posted and we know it's there, um, and like you said, there's three dots where you do the full packet. So you get just the agenda. If you click on the agenda piece, or when you click on the three dots, you get the packet piece. So you get the full, the full piece. And what uh, Levi tries to do that following the Monday before this meeting is send out an email to everyone. So what we need to do is make sure that we have uh, specifically Dave's email mm -hmm. And we'll check in with him after the meeting. And, and make I sure do, we have that. yeah. And I do put actually the directions to that link and all the emails with the breakdown on where to go yeah. to. I, I think yeah. your email is great. I just um, responded to the public that said that it was uh, they weren't able to find the minutes, so I wanted to show how to get to it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Anything else for Levi? Anything else, Levi, for us? That's an update there. Uh, sounds good. Okay. We've got no information items, so action items. Annual report. Right, action item, annual report. Um, so, um, this I, we did do an annual report. Um, I know it was talked about before that we want to do something with maybe a little more depth to it, and that's certainly something we can talk about and do in the future. <laughs> Being a little bit behind the eight ball on this one, I did kind of the, the city standard format for our annual report, kind of what they, they wanted to see. Um, and I do have that in front of me, and that should have been in the packet too. Um, so annual report, I just figured I'd hit the highlights real quick here uh, of that. Um, Airport Advisory Board, codified 1993, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some of the highlights from stuff we did uh, this year from the list that I've got here. Of course, new airport manager is in there. Um, the schedule of rates and charges was a big one that we finally got through this year, which is great. Really, we should be addressing that every year and checking to make sure it's good. It's good to actually have gotten that done. Uh, south side sewer project um, started and completed all pretty quickly there. So that's another big accomplishment along with airport striping uh, and in general painting all over the airport. We did a whole bunch this year. Um, also in this line, uh, of course, the new leasing documents and going through there to, to make, bring them into compliance. Um, and well, prey dog mitigation uh, we've been working on. Um, yeah, those are some of the kind of the highlights that we've been working on here at the airport board this year. So that's kind of the annual report. Is there any questions on that? Or? Mr. Dean. Yeah, so I see the, the mowing. I think we talked about that in October, November. Do we have somebody set up for the summer for mowing? So we were actually just have, had a meeting last Thursday with the Public Works and Natural Resources about that. That's going through pro procurement now. We're preparing to get some bids for those. And the, the hope, of course, being putting it out for bid now, maybe when mowers are a little more hungry for, for work in the middle of the winter, we'll get maybe some better uh, some better offers than we got last summer, in the middle of the summer when our contract ran out. So, And again, the, the idea of being moving forward, we'll be redoing this contract in the middle of the winter instead of in the middle of summer when if uh, our uh, individual decides he's retiring, it doesn't put us in quite so much of a pickle. Is there a cutoff date for that as well? You have like a date you want to have this done by or? We, uh, I want to start getting it out there essentially next week for getting proposals. It'll all kind of depend on how uh, pr procurement uh, process goes and kind of what their timeline is for, for doing that official paperwork. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, Mr. Vice Chair Robeson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, maybe I've mixed two things in my mind, but wasn't the annual report something that we put together over a long period of time with pictures and took it to city council? So yes. are we doing yes. a format change here? Is that 
what you're suggesting, or is this just like a guide for us to put together our annual report? Oh, so to my understanding, in the past, and this is kind of what, from what uh, former board member Melinda was saying, um, there used to be a, 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 like a little thicker, a little more story oriented for the annual reports. And of course, I haven't set through one before, so um, I'm not sure how that process went with you all before. But this is just something we kind of prepared to fulfill the, the requirement of the annual report. Uh, from a yearly nature. So it's certainly something that we can do moving forward, but this fulfills the official requirement for the annual report. Okay. Harrison, what do you think about that? So, I mean, I, I appreciate what we've done in the past, particularly what Vice Chair Emeritus Jordan's effort on that. I'm just going to create a title for you, Melinda. Um, I, I really like being able to tell the story about the airport while fulfilling the requirement. I think my question is for Council Member Martin, which is what do other boards give you and what is valuable to Council since this is a report to you? What would you like to see from us? Um, you know, and can you, can you do the mic, please? Um. <laughs> there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, it varies so much that um, uh, I, I really am a loss as, as to what it says. I mean, Levi is correct. There is a definition of a minimum. Um, there's no rule that says you can't put extra stuff in there. Um, but uh, in my experience with other boards is more like you have, to, you have to twist arms to get the minimum to be fulfilled. Um, and the work is depth is is typically done by the staff liaison. In this case, it's the airport manager, um, and uh, some boards do a formal approval of it, and some just say, "Oh, thanks." So, um, you know, I th that that's really all I have have to say. I I think that the. Um, I honestly don't know. Maybe Phil, you might. I don't know because you're a liaison. Um, I, I don't know whether this board could could decide to have a bylaw that said that they require approval of the annual report. I don't know. That's uh, Councilmember Martin. That was our plan for tonight. Was to Request ask for it. ask for any changes. Mm -hmm. Basically, this is just pulled off your agendas over the last past or 2022. Quite frankly. And this is the same thing we've done with other boards and commissions. So this is this mirrors exactly what we do for the Transportation Advisory Board. So my apologies if it's kind of not up to the standards you've seen before. But I, I have failed to find any great attachments from previous uh, airport managers that shows that level of detail. So I'd have to be, uh, we'd have to try to find that or be directed toward it because I'm I'm not seeing it in our in our files. So, and I mean. We as a board failed to do this last year, so we did not meet our requirement in 2022 to submit a report for 2021. So, I, I mean, I, I, I would just say my personal opinion is I would like to do more than this, um, but also make sure we get it, say, next month done um, so we actually meet the requirement. When we redid our bylaws, I don't remember what the timing was. I think it was last year. We said first half of the year um, for approving um, an annual report. So we've got a little time, but I don't want to just let it linger because otherwise we'll never do it. Chairman so, Earl, if 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 I may add something, please. There is a sh there's a chance that I might have one from 2018 or 2019 lying around that I could provide as a model. Um, you know, I've been through a couple changes of computer and stuff since then, so if I have it, it's in the cloud. But if you'd like to have a copy, uh, I'll try. I'll either get it to you by Monday or I will give up in despair and say, well, no, I didn't hang on to it. Oh, I, I know we have the copies, um, Councilmember Martin. I know that, um, I know I have them. I believe Vice Chair Meredith Jordan has provided them to Levi. Um, okay, for what's cool. been done in the past. So I, I think we can work through that. Um, Vice Chair Robeson. Thank you. Yeah, I saw Melinda nodding at me. So I think between the two of you and maybe 
uh, Councilmember Martin, we can get some old ones. And I would say I'm willing to put some effort into it this month to make it uh, more interesting to look at. So I, I do appreciate you guys putting this together. That's a good outline. Um, I would just like to maybe add to it. Are you, to, you have some time to work with me or what should I, we do? I have minimal time, but I think that would be great to do that together. Okay. Um, Cause I actually think some of the past ones um, have done a really good job telling the airport story and probably a less good job telling what the board has done. And so a little blending of the two would probably be appropriate. So then I would make the motion um, that we don't take action on this tonight, that two board members reconvene and we bring this forward next month for approval. Second that. Mr. Dean seconds. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We'll bring it back. Um, Russell, you and I will be the two unless someone disagrees with that. Okay. Leave anything else on that then for us tonight? That's all I had. That's all we had on action items. Okay. We will we'll work with you and we'll get something together and approve it next month. We're moving quick tonight. Uh, final public invited to be heard. You can tell me if you agree or disagree with your invented title. Um, and you do need to hit the button. Oh, I have to hit this one. Oh, wow. It's you know so complicated. Um, Melinda Jordan, 1110 Twin Peaks Circle, Longmont. Um, Look what I happen to have with me. Good thing I carry a carpet bag. Um, so there's a hard copy from 2018. Oh. It's pretty old, yeah. yeah this is the same. Mm -hmm. And then I can get you the soft copy. Yep. Um, and then the recommendation that we had was um, that the requirement is the sterile report, just a report on what the board's done, but that I could um, solicit input, and the recommendation from Marsha was to uh, provide it to Marika with the city and get her to put it together as a city publication that would uh, go along with the report. So I uh, had just asked um, Howard Morgan with LOPA uh, along when I sent my dues in to solicit input through LOPA to also um, make a notice there that we were looking for input. So I'll say that on the record and then to you guys too, if you know of anything on the airport that should be included and that would be business, charitable, um, milestones, um, accomplishments, we have rescue missions, we have medical missions, um, corporate traffic, you know, any kind of uh, interesting notes. And then I solicited them from the businesses out there as well to just see how uh, business looks and, and what their sales were like. Um, and, and then we'll put a request out to the field too because that's where we get our volunteer pilots. And uh, I don't know, this last year there's always animal rescue, that's, you can guarantee that. And then the Phenom does quite a bit um, of charitable. So I'll work on that and then I can send it to you guys but I'll also then put something together for Marika that she could put it, hopefully uh, put something together to accompany ours. But the requirement is that the dry one, yeah, the really, just pretty sterile. And then finally on the air show, um, I reached out to one of our sponsors, um, historically, uh, I won't name them here, um, and I reached out to them today proposing even sponsoring the Jet Show or Bob Freeman, and to, if they wanted to, instead of to be a general sponsor, um, if they wanted to hone in on a specific event, I also had a band pencil in that date for us, and they come with a price tag as well. So I started reaching out, saying that you know we've got to make deposits, and things are happening now if we're going to uh, be having it. So I want to let you know that that I've got a few feelers out for some bigger sponsors that would uh, help us make those deposits and some of those um, expenses that we have now. Thank you. You guys are doing great. Congratulations, for us. Thanks, Melinda. Would anyone else like to speak now? Mr. Kopp. Dave Kopp again. Uh, we'll start with a P&L statement. You know, 
the uh, as a uh, annual report. I we used to get three, four years of data showing the income and expenses, how the income increased, where the expenses increased. You know that was pretty pretty good review and uh, showed us what kind of income we were getting from all the hangers, and uh, and also include you know your grants that you've applied for, those that you got, those you didn't get over the last three or four years, and then show you the current one. I applaud you for bringing it up, Mr. Robertson. Yeah, it was very cursory. So yeah, we'd like to know what the heck's going on with all the money we're spending out there, or at least uh, trying to. And uh, the prairie dogs. Let me give you a big hint. Start securing the airport. People are dropping prairie dogs off almost every night. Yeah, I know it's illegal. That's what Tim Barr said 15 years ago. But I've got data that confirms they're doing it. I out there in a helicopter hovering after a new snowstorm, you can see where trucks back up and dump them right there in the field. That's why you can't get rid of them. That's, this is the dumping ground for the whole damn county. And it's still happening. So you got to secure it. You got to make sure it doesn't happen. And then why is that happening? Because we, we spent $60,000 on a prairie dog preservation field on the southwest corner of the airport. And then we didn't maintain it. And that's where it used to be a helicopter practice area over there. And that's why I was over there. And that's what's happening. You can see the little craters running right through the preservation area, right into the airport. So you can kill them all you want, but you got to stop them from being dropped here by other city employees and city residents. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else tonight? David Schenk, Bucks, 464 Longmont. Um, <clears throat> with respect to the annual report, it looks to me like that would be a really nice place for the airport manager and staff and the airport board to brag about the airport, to kind of pump up the airport to the city council and kind of convince somebody on city council that it really is an asset to the city. It's a tremendous asset, but we don't seem to market it very well. My comment on the prairie dogs is you got to stop them from being dumped, that's for sure. But the other thing you've got to do is kill them the minute they show up. If you leave two of them out there, I can guarantee you you're going to have a whole bunch of them and then you're looking at $40,000 again. But if you kill two of them for 10 or 15 bucks, you've done your job. But you got to get the first two. Thank you. Anyone else? Last call? All right, uh, we'll close public, final public fight invited to be heard. Board, council, and staff comments. Mr. Dean, I see you in the queue, so you're yeah, up. So I've sent it in the paperwork. Um, I don't really know how long it's gonna take to get back and uh, with the B2 that crashed about a month ago, I've heard there's, there's delays, but I did send in paperwork to Whiteman Air Force Base for a B2 flyover or a jet flyover. So um, we'll see how that goes for the uh, actual confirmation. Uh, Council Member Martin. Thank you. Uh, I want to make sure there are no other board members that want to speak first. Um, I know oh. I do, but no one else is in the queue. Okay. Well. Go ahead. Go ahead. So um, a couple things. Uh, one is uh, there's a, a misapprehension uh, that the city council does not think of the airport as an asset to the community. In fact, the city council does, and the economic development partners do think of the airport as an asset to the community and want the um, uh, you know want to find ways to fund the airport more and make it more modern and uh, accelerate the development of the land. Um, I, I hope that everyone will understand that and uh, you know get into a, a best hopes kind of mode rather than a worst fears kind of mode. Nobody's out to get you. Um, <laughs> you know the lease isn't intended that way. This is strictly a you know protection of of 
that, that a landlord has, you know, and, and has a fiduciary responsibility to, um, you know, to do. There is, there is no reason why an extension to a lease would not be granted unless the hangar was in bad repair or, you know, the, the um, lease payments were not being made or there was some safety violation going on, you know, we've had, we've had that happen in the history of the airport. Um, and, and the things in the lease are for that reason. So I, I, I'm, you know, just, I'm, I'm surprised by, by the reaction that, that has, has really come out of just the lease got looked at because we needed to change the numbers. Um, but that's all it is, and there is there is every desire to um, improve the airport. There are rules about how much uh, about how the airport has to operate. It's an enterprise. The city doesn't get to take taxpayer money and push it into the airport. That's against the law. It's against the Tabor Amendment. So it's actually unconstitutional to do it. Um, the airport has to pay its way by fees, um, by grants, uh, and by, um, you know, other business operations um, that have to be done, and it has to pay its own expenses, and that's just the way it is, because we live in Colorado, and we have the Tabor Amendment to the Constitution. And, and that doesn't translate into the city being out to get the airport. Um, the last thing I want to say is, is that I fail to understand the opposition to what is a citywide uh, electrification initiative. The energy transition is real. And... Um, I, I get the feeling that there's there's you know some idea that electrification of the airport means to the exclusion of other styles of aircraft, and and that's not true at all, you know it's it's just the idea that that the potential of this land in the city's energy economy should be increased, and that the airport should be friendly to an emerging style of, of aircraft. So there are potential benefits and no potential harms uh, for doing this. Um, I would invite uh, the board to invite uh, a, a speaker, uh, people I worked with. We have uh, Dr. Grunsfeld, who would, I think, probably be happy to give a presentation on the technology state of uh, airport electri aviation electrification. I also have, he might be harder to get, um, but uh, Dr. Troutman, who is a, a public policy specialist uh, with regard to batteries and, and the state of battery technology, um, and he works with the government and military and uh, is made me very aware of the amount of federal investment there is in this technology, in all these technologies. So, um, you know, I would be happy just because it, it's a very interesting topic and and of importance to pilots. Um, and yeah, you know, there it's it's going to be just like the previous generations of aircraft. They didn't have huge ranges in the beginning. Um, and they they developed and came along, um, so th uh, that is an option. I you know I th I think if if the board is interested, if the public is interested, public stakeholders, um, those are options. But it's not going to take anything away from anybody. So thanks all, and happy New Year. Thank you, Councilmember Martin. Um, Miss Vice Chair Robeson. Thank you. It seemed like a good time to jump in. Um, if you guys remember last meeting, we were presented with uh, a document that had been come up with by city staff regarding the sustainability and a resolution that we could recommend. 
And we didn't find it to be up to snuff, so I rewrote it. I conferred with Melinda, she liked it. Um, if we want to look at it now, I emailed it to Levi so that it can be put up there. Or I can read it to you, or we could just do it at another time. I think my preference would be next month when we can review it. Okay. But it was on my list of I really want that to come back in February. It's ready. I wrote it. Okay. Whenever. So on the you know first item there of future agenda items, that would be that's my request, not an idea. Um, on the discussion about the annual report, um, I absolutely agree. It's a great chance for us to brag about the airport and and brag to council a little bit about everything that's going on out there, the economic development, the investment. Um, I appreciate your comments, Councilmember Martin, that the council is pro airport. That's certainly not always been the case. And so I, I invite the, I, I like having the PR opportunity for us to be out in front of council and talking about the good that's happening and what's coming next. Because um, I really do, I've had this conversation with Levi and a number of you, I think this has been a transition year and that you know, we're, we're, we're moving forward and we're moving in the right direction for the first time in years. And so to be able to have that discussion and you know, I recognize every time a lease or a rates and charges goes before council, there's always the questions of how does this fit into a broader strategic plan, kind of what's the big picture and we're, we're moving that way, we're moving in that direction. Um, so I want to be able to tell that story as well. Um, we have on here air show as well. Melinda brought this up. Um, I'd love to kick off that discussion and ideally figure out who is going to be leading that from a board perspective and pushing that forward. Um, since if we're all doing it, it is once a month in a public forum and that's not going to work to actually make this happen. Vice Chair Robeson. Thank you. Um, it seems by default it's been me kind of leading it since I've been uh, checking out the Airbus side of it. And Melinda and Dale Van Zandt said he's uh, certainly willing to uh, come back and, and contribute what he knows about wrangling the finances and setting up the whole thing since he did it before. I feel like the first step is um, a question for you, Council Member. Is, is there money already earmarked for this for this year in the city budget? No. Not that I know of. Um, I will tell you, the council doesn't get deep down in the in the uh, finances. The the what the budget we get is pretty um, pretty limited. So uh, in in detail, <laughs> it's not a limited budget particularly. Um, but again, taxpayer money cannot be allocated to this. Not even the air show. So this is coming directly out of the airport budget. So I've had we've had preliminary uh, discussions with uh, the city already, and the money that was put up for in the past, and I haven't gotten real deep down into it, but it was indicated to me that uh, we certainly could allocate some funds to help with that, wherever that comes from, from our end. Um, and so those discussions have been had. We just need to continue to move forward with them. Okay. Yep. Um, maybe I should have been on. Um, you know. As I hear the question, um, I don't know if it's ever been asked before, not in my presence, uh, how it was funded, and I've you know kind of honestly thought that it was a a volunteer kind of operation that was uh, uh, you know done by the grassroots, but um, there may be promotional money that the city could spend on an a publicity event which is not, you know, it doesn't benefit the enterprise. So um, in, in, in that case, the, the thing to do is, oh, get Marika involved. You know, the, the head of communications for the city uh, is a pilot and a former member of this board. So yeah, you know, that's, that's uh, I think, a more promising answer to that question than the first one I gave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not airport spending, it's event spending. And I know there, though I've not been on this board when an air show has taken place, but there have been lines and budgets that we saw for prior years um, that was out of the enterprise fund. I don't remember how much it was. I know it's been done in the past. That's about all I've got to add there. So, um, 
And that's kind of where, as I've been digging and looking, and I found probably those exact same budget items this last week that you were looking at as we're getting into that. And that's kind of what I brought up and said, hey, you know, here's what we gave in the past. And you could we potentially do something like this with a, you know, over time increase, you know, percentage increase. And so far I've gotten, you know, nods and like, well, let's start talking about it and see what we can do. So nothing set in stone, no promises have been made, but there seems to be a very open, positive communication about it. So we started this. Russell, you said you've been doing it by default. Yeah. And Melinda. Melinda's well, and and Melinda. Part. From a board perspective, yeah. please excuse me. Um, do you want to continue doing that, or are you doing it by default? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I will continue doing it. Okay. Um, Mr. Dean. Uh, we talked about the day. Did we talk about the hours, what, what time we were expecting it, from what time to what time to go to? I don't remember discussing that, kind of how long it's going to be. It could be weather dependent, but typically you'd start in the late morning and go through the lunch hour. It would be, uh, depending on how big the air show is, three or four hours. So like eight to noon, eight to two? The last couple I've been to, uh, Melinda can probably say what the Longmont one was, but uh, just the last two I went to in Kansas and Nebraska started around 10, and they were a little smaller, so they might finish up at one o'clock or something like that. But yeah, 7 a.m. Seeing 7 a.m. to 2. I get, okay, so yeah. when I'm saying 10, that's when... Planes are moving, I guess. The whole event has to start early for parking and things like that, yeah. So if you're talking about when the first person shows up at the airport, it's going to be early, but it'll be uh, late morning by the time that airplanes start flying around. Yeah, I definitely remember getting up at the crack of dawn to get out to the yeah. airport to be the government representative. Hmm. And, and talking about kind of these, you know, detail items that Mr. Dean brought up, stuff like that, when's the time, stuff like that, I would, I would probably highly recommend that, uh, you know, Russell, you and I get together and we start building a core, if we, you know, we're taking it seriously and we're going to do it, we start building a core of people that can kind of tackle the individual items and meet on more than a monthly basis probably yep. uh, because it's going to take a whole lot of work to get this done and on time. So I think, you know, just, you know, making my staff comments here, I think it would be positive to, you know, get together, start building a team and really reach out there. I've done some preliminary, I've directed uh, a tenant already who uh, reached out to me, uh, to Melinda. So hopefully he's serious about helping with the air show. I had to reach out to Marika. I haven't got any promises from her necessarily as far as she, what she'll be involved. But yeah, building a good solid team and, and really start working on it hard. Well, the good thing is I got a bunch of stuff from Dale already, and he put together um, a lessons learned. So I've got three pages here of basically hints from what they learned from the last two. That's really helpful since we're we're so many years apart. There's a little bit of knowledge loss there. So I'm glad Dale did that. That's really that's wonderful. And Russell, thank you for sure agreeing to to be a leader there. Um, given Colorado Open Meetings rules, we can have another board member who's doing that alongside you, would anyone like to? Mr. Dean. I'd be happy to help. Okay. Thank you. And, that, and that's, to be clear, not to the exclusion of any other board members, but means you guys can actually meet and work through this, um, and then we can continue to have discussions in board meetings with the whole group. Okay. Anything else on the air show right now? 2023 work plan is the other thing that's listed here under... Um, staff comments. Levi, you and I had a brief discussion earlier this week around this. Um, do you want to maybe kick off kind of what we're what we're thinking? Yeah. So just having a, a brief conversation about uh, you know looking at the year ahead and uh, kind of what uh, we we as a board might want to tackle. So it's uh, honestly it's kind of related to the, that first item, ideas for future agenda items, I guess you could say. Uh, but what is our, our work plan going to be? Uh, for 2023 and just kind of trying to get the discussion started on that. So I certainly, you know, we, we talked through absolutely bringing the sustainability resolution back. Mm -hmm. um, we talked a little bit about grants um, that the city is, I guess there's a new resource in the city and so being able to have a better discussion around that and what, what opportunities there might be, mm -hmm. um, how that ties into a CIP, air show, obviously. Yeah, knew that would be a big one. <laughs> I know there was something else that I'm blanking on that we talked about. Uh, I'd have to check my notes back in the office too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, my notes aren't here, which is not helpful. <laughs> Does anyone else have anything they'd like to make sure that we include? Oh, um, RFPs for hangar developments. Oh yes, 
Absolutely. Oh, yes. We, we talked that was the one because I think, if I recall correctly, last year we'd actually uh, picked an individual to help with that, and then we had to uh, put those off because of some of the lease concern issues and stuff like that, and we had to have a solid one prior approved prior to moving forward with any of that. So we'll need to probably go through that election at point, some point again and pick someone else to help review RFPs. Vice Chair Robeson. Thank you. I found the my list, I think, which is probably similar to what you guys were talking about. <laughs> Since Steve uh, is not with us anymore, and I have forgotten, what whatever happened with Southside bathrooms? Did we get some, or what, what's going on? There? So the last kind of where that hung out was cost estimates were prohibitively expensive for putting in a solid bathroom. So, you know, kind of to give you some insight into uh, what we're thinking at the moment, as we are hopefully moving forward with development on the south side sometime soon, and we would start having that conversation when the next development starts having, you know, could we work that into a potential projects there that could save us money as moving forward as plumbing's going in, as water's going in. Um, perhaps we could even work that into a deal with someone who's construction and the lease agreement, you know, hey, we, we can do this for you. If as part of your construction at the end of your hangar, you put in male, female bathrooms, and then we'll provide this, this, and that. Do we have something we can offer them that would be fair in return for them building us a bathroom? I mean, all yeah, all leases are, are negotiated, and again, that's kind of what we've been talking about in this whole thing. So just you reduction know, in rate is what you're thinking? It could be, you know, hey, look, I'm I'm spending, if I'm putting this bathroom in, I'm spending an extra $100,000, and I, I say, so, okay, we're going to, you know, this was your lease and your option to renew. Okay, we're going to give it another five years or whatever on your option to renew. There's all kinds of things we can do or promise to provide. Again, it's always a negotiation. Is that kind of what we're looking for is as far as the work plan is these kind of bigger ideas oh. that we went through a list last year? Okay. I think it is some of that, absolutely. It, 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 it's yeah. We've had a discussion a few times of you know what are the topics we need to make sure we're covering for the year. Okay. And so, yeah, it, it is that and that does jog my memory that I think um, Steve is the one who volunteered to be on that RFP review, yes, of course. partly to make that part happen. So we'll absolutely need to bring that back and pay, get somebody else involved yeah. in that. I also see the annual report was supposed to be Melinda and tell us. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, so, so since we're talking about work plan, if you guys could talk about kind of have your ideas and thoughts, if you could get that to me, then next month I can bring a work plan back to you and hopefully we can kind of get that approved for moving forward. Well, I think we hit the main points here. Yeah, I do too. Thank you. Um, you did jog one memory there, Levi, about giving you notes. Um, if anyone has anything to contribute to the annual report, as people are going out and seeking the input, please send it to Levi. Um, we don't have city email addresses. The easiest way is to get it to him, um, and then he can disseminate it. Um, if you have ours, that's fine, but... I would just say by default, Levi is a great point to get it to the rest of us. Councilmember Martin. Uh, yeah, just in terms of, of the work plan, um, that's, uh, uh, this is something that I've been lobbying for through uh, strategic integration, but uh, I think it's really important to have early transparency in terms of grants um, you know, what are we going for? What's in the queue? Um, you want to, uh, you know, there are not just individual grant opportunities, but sub, but a, a prioritization of subjects that, that we want to pursue. Um, uh, because, you know, it's strategic. There's only so much capacity to manage a, a grant once it's been accepted, because there's work, right? You got to do report, and, and, and you don't just get to just spend the money. You have to, um, you know, provide assurance that the money's being handled properly and that the work's being done and all that. And it's not just the FAA. There are many other available sources. So, um, you know, the the council and the EDP would both be very interested in in having a window into that. So just a suggestion. Okay. I would echo that interest. I, I know you, you're just starting to work with uh, mm -hmm. grants folks in the city, but yeah. that, when I bring it up, that's absolutely the objective, is hearing about some of these opportunities. And to the extent we should be informing council, advocating to council, 
that the city is pursuing them. And we have been looking at some options and stuff like that. We haven't necessarily started pursuing. Of course, there's ones that we have to make sure that the city is you know, willing, ready to do before we pursue and stuff like that. So that's a big thing. But uh, very excited to meet and very excited that indeed that the city now has a, a de 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 designated grant individual. Um, she's bringing a lot to the table and she's bringing um, a lot of stuff that is kind of outside the, the airport world that we can potentially utilize on the airport that she has really good knowledge of. Uh, which hopefully will benefit us in the future. Levi, Phil, other staff comments tonight? Um, no, I think that covers us. Did you have anything, Phil? All right. Okay. With no other comments, um, we'll adjourn for tonight. Thank you, everybody. See you next month. All right.